Mike? Yes. Dean Jan, good morning, Dean Jan. Thank you for the introduction. Fellow Postmasters, any guests announced? No guests. All leadership. Cool. Cool possibilities. I am going to talk to you this morning about my experiences, what happened with me, how I got to California. But in another way, the things I'm going to talk to you about will be really different than what you expect. I'm going to talk a little bit about showing up, getting up, and staying up. <laughs> but before I do that, I want to share something with you that may make you feel a little uncomfortable. I want to share something with you because I feel compelled as leadership VP of education at that time was Thad Gray. Thad sitting in the back right there. Wow. He can validate for you what I'm telling you. Because Thad looked me in the eye and said, Hey, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I said, Thad, I want to elevate my speaking to a world class level. As I told you, I had something I want to share with you. Something that may make you feel a little uncomfortable, especially as leadership. Because as I set out with my own personal, individual goals, I made a startling discovery. Now I know I'm on safe ground because of my Toastmasters. And I know the people in this room will not just get up and walk out. No matter what I say, that people will give me the benefit of the doubt. And I'm counting on you this morning to do just that. Leadership, fellow Toastmasters, Toastmasters is real. Toastmasters is rigged. Few people know exactly what I'm talking about. 
Toastmasters is rigged. R-I-G-G-E-D. Rigged. It's in Lincoln Way <coughs> High School. Two years ago, meeting as part of our regular schedule at Toastmasters. And I was giving my icebreaker speech. Two years ago, I was in a 60-foot classroom on Lincoln Highway. Two years later, I was on a 60-foot stage in California. Now I want to ask you, how could that be possible? Toastmasters is rigged. The first thing that they do when you join, what's your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? I want to be a world class level speaker. That's a great goal. We can help. The first thing is, Hayward, we need you to show up. I can do that. <coughs> I can show up. Woody Allen says that 80% of success is just showing up. Showing up is harder than it seems. Sometimes work gets in the way, doesn't it? You think you're on your way to a Toastmasters meeting, and all of a sudden, your job is calling. Sometimes our kids get in the way. They have things like basketball practice, play dates, things that make it very complicated for us to go and be where we think we should be. And other things creep in, like fear and anxiety. And you have to give your icebreaker speech. And it's been delayed three times by you. <laughs> if you're a little afraid about what might happen, showing up is so important. You already know that, don't you? Toastmasters also says, besides showing up, you actually have to get up. Getting up means standing in front of people and you don't really want to. Talking about things when you would really rather be quiet. Getting up, so important. The last thing, staying up. You walk into Toastmasters, they expect you to be up, to be passionate, to be animated, to be excited. Being up, staying up is all part of the process. It's not just enough to show up. Now all the time I'm getting these lessons, thinking that it's really all about me. After all, I'm the guy that wants to elevate his speaking to a world-class level. And this is how I found out it was real. Do you know that I heard speeches in my club that were every bit as good as the speeches I heard in California? Absolutely. Do you know that when my club was tired of hearing my speech for the 400th time, they sent me out to the New Linux Club? <laughs> if you're from the New Linux Club, raise your hand really quickly. Do you know the New Linux Club treated me with kindness, dignity, and respect? Do you know they gave me excellent feedback? They welcomed me. 
and when New Lenox got tired of me, they sent me out to Joliet. Can I see a show of hands of Joliet club members? Now, all along, I'm thinking, this is about me, about me showing up, about getting up and staying up. And then I found out it really wasn't about me at all. I was in California, standing on a 60-foot stage with people from Australia, China, from Spain, Ireland. I was talking to a world-class audience. I was giving a speech. I heard someone introduce me. Hayward Suggs, District 54. And then I heard the strangest sound. Woohoo! <laughs> All along I thought I was in California by myself. Turns out I wasn't. So many Toastmasters there with me. How could I fail? Still not knowing at the time how rigged it was. Now I flew out to Palm Desert, California. It's 118 degrees every day, every day. When the wind blew, it became 125. <laughs> You're talking about cool possibilities? Trust me, there was nothing cool about Palm Desert. When I got to California, I did feel a little lonely. All of a sudden, I got a call. You know who called me? Then our club president, Thad Gray. Thad Gray called me to wish me success and to tell me that he was in a room at the same hotel. He was there to support me in what it was that I said I wanted to do. He spent every day he was out there working with me on my speech. Now Thad must have heard my speech a thousand times and each time he let me know exactly what it was that he thought I needed to do to improve it. Thad came out there on his own dime. He took time away from his family to show up, to be there for me, because I said I had a goal. <clears throat> Toastmasters is rigged. I said I had a goal and something I wanted to do, and people were willing to dedicate their time their life to help me. How else is it really? All along, people will look you in the eye and tell you how you can get better. The very same people that you're competing against are pulling for you all along. I have never been anywhere where even when you don't win, People celebrate you. I would have loved to have won first place. But when it was over, I could not tell that I did not win. <laughs> People were walking up to me, hey, what a great job. Oh, you did great. That was a fabulous speech. I was like, well, you know, I could have done, no, oh, no, no, no. You'll get them next time. I was sad for all of about eight hours. And before I knew it, I was just caught up in the moment of being a Toastmaster. Back to the red part. Toastmasters has a way of brainwashing you. And I'm trying to warn you. 
now's a good time to leave. <laughs> you probably joined this organization because you thought it would help you. The reality is, you get the opportunity to help other people. And the way that feels, so empowering, makes you feel worthy. I come to Toastmasters meetings. I have to make a real clear distinction as to why I'm there. Sometimes I come and I'm thinking to myself, I'm here for me. So when I debate whether or not I should show up, I have to remember that I'm there for other people. So I show up for them. To think about the feedback that I get. You know the feedback you get in Toastmasters meetings where people talk about your speech and someone looks you right in the eye and they say, hey, we're you need to move around a little bit more. You need more vocal variety. And you take that feedback. You go to another number and they say, you move around too much. <laughs> feedback. Nowhere else on earth will people take the time to tell you exactly what it is that they think about something you just did. And they'll always give it to you in such a way that is palatable, that you can take it in. People have said some really harsh things in a way that made you want to hear them again. Because you can feel yourself getting better. And in turn, you learn how to give other people feedback. Now, how many people in here right now, if I asked you to hold up a shot glass would know exactly what I'm talking about? A few. Now I want you to take your shot glass and I want you to think about this. How do you like your whiskey? Do you like your whiskey straight? Do you like it with a little pop, a little water, a little ice? That's how feedback is at Toastmasters. People ask you, how do you like it? Some people like it soft, a lot of ice, sugar coated. Other people like this straight down in a shot glass. Take your feedback, you make your adjustments, and you get better. Feedback comes in all different forms. I got terrific feedback all the time at Toastmasters. People willing to stop what they were doing and share with me how I could get better. When I joined Toastmasters, I thought it would be an opportunity for me to highlight, showcase myself. Not that I was worth highlighting or showcasing. I just thought, from an arrogant standpoint, that it would really be about me being on stage, because that's what people kept telling me, it was about stage time. Toastmasters is every bit about backstage, because it's all the things that leadership does, and it's all the things that members do to improve other people that somehow never get seen. When I was on the stage in California, it really wasn't because of me. It was because of people at the club level, at the division level, and the district level, making sacrifices, helping me to prepare and get better, organizing, planning, and discussing the future of members. I found out that what I thought was about me and my skills and what I could do was essentially about other people showing up and doing what they did to make it possible. It was rigged all along. I couldn't fail. People say that Toastmasters is like a safety net, that somehow you can take a risk. 
and it's okay you can take a risk, because even if you fall, you'll be caught because you're in Toastmasters. Toastmasters won't even let you fall, and it's unfair. I know you don't believe it's unfair. Some of you are looking at me right now thinking to yourselves, how could he say it's unfair? Toastmasters did not prepare you for life. In the other world, people are pulling against you. You know, the real world. You will become spoiled by Toastmasters. When I go to work, I expect for people to give me honest feedback. <laughs> Doesn't happen. I expect camaraderie and support, even when I'm competing against other people. Doesn't happen in that world. It only happens in this world. You have the opportunity to be around some of the most gifted, and talented people ever on the face of this planet. People who will spend their lives, their time, making you better. All you have to do is show up. Once you show up, that's 80%. Then you have to get up, which boosts you up to 90%. Stay up, which is 100% of the battle. Of all the things that I could have chosen to do in my life, being part of Toastmasters has turned out to be the absolute single most important thing to me. I've learned so much. I've had the opportunity not only to build skills, but build relationships. I never thought when I joined Toastmasters it would give me the level of satisfaction that it has. I never thought about it because I didn't think on any level it would be possible. We talk about the coolest possibilities. Talk about what we said as individual goals. And we can link our individual goals to organizational goals. That we can have a force of people behind us that propels and pushes us even when we feel inadequate. There were moments when I was in California, that I felt inadequate. I felt ill-prepared, only because the class of speakers that I was around dwarfed whatever I thought <coughs> skills were about. I was able to look at people in California and think back to people in my club the best speakers in my club were every bit as good as the people in California. There were just so many more of them. For brief moments, I felt out of place. I thought back to my club in the district, and I felt supported. I felt like I was in the right place at the right time. I achieved my goals because of Toastmasters. The opportunity, the support, the leadership, difference makers for me. And I am forever in debt to Toastmasters for that opportunity. And summarize for you. Toastmasters is ready. Don't let anyone tell you different. If you join Toastmasters and you say what your goal is, they will work with you to make it happen. I don't know where else in life you go and that occurs, where people are concerned about you being successful and willing to do whatever it takes for you to hit your goals proud to be a member, 
proud to have the opportunity to speak to you and want to tell you that as leaders, what you are doing makes a huge difference for members. You sacrifice, you show up here today, get up the workshops, you stay up with your passion, your energy, and your enthusiasm, that people benefit. People have the opportunity because of what you do. And that I never would have had that opportunity without you making the sacrifices that you made. I want to thank you for the opportunity to come and talk to you this morning. I want to wish you the best in what you do. And I want to tell you that Toastmasters, without a doubt, best organization I've ever been associated with. Thank you.